Hey Pleasant Hill School students and families, I hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome back to my house and welcome back to our butterfly watch and see what's going on at, uh, with all our painted ladies. So when I last left you guys, um, our butterflies were looking like, or our caterpillars I should say, were looking like this. the top for the most part in this image there is one more caterpillar down on the ground and actually two of them i believe there's one here and then that little guy is still kind of wandering around on the bottom as well so they're all kind of hanging upside down and in this image we can see that this is the first chrysalis we saw form had shed his skin earlier and there was another one back there who's already made his transformation and then this guy right here you can see there's some bunched up little bit of skin. He's already started shedding it and pushing it off. So for good, I'd say two hours, there was a lot of shaking going on in this cup to get all their um, skin off. So it's kind of like a sock hanging on the end of your toes and just trying to shake it off to get it off completely. Okay, so here's our last image. And I'm gonna have some sad news here for you guys. Our little caterpillar, bless his little heart, we he sure tried uh, and he grew a little bit over the last little while but um in in these final days he kind of just crawled into a corner of the cup and he has stopped moving so he has left us unfortunately he he i'm not sure if there was something wrong with him if he actually was a painted lady caterpillar or another type of caterpillar but he wasn't able to make that um, transformation from caterpillar into chrysalis and therefore that is the end unfortunately of his life cycle there but they all made it to the top and they all did really well um, connecting to the top and shedding their skin. But we did have one possible casualty. Um, he could be part, he or she, I should say, could be perfectly fine. We had one caterpillar that had transformed into their chrysalis pupa stage and was up here. And during the shakes, when he was shaken all about to get his um, skin off, um, his chrysalis did break, the chrysalis did break free and landed on his side. Now the tricky part there is I can't really touch it at all because if I have any bacteria on my hands, again, I could for sure make it sick. Um, the other tricky thing is that he could possibly be fine this whole time. He can go through his metamorphosis, but with the weight of him laying on the bottom of the cup, it might put some pressure on parts of his body and he might not develop properly. So he might not come out with his wings perfect, which means he might not be able to fly or he might still have some other difficulties. Or the possibility is he's gonna be fine and he will join his siblings, his brothers and sisters here through this big change. And here's just a really short recording of that evening where we actually got a little video of the caterpillars as they're kind of doing that for their chrysalis as I should say as they're kind of doing that little rotation trying to move off that skin and shed it as they move into this next stage of their life so check this out Well, there you have it. We are moving through these life stages of these butterflies really quickly. We have started with eggs. Well, we didn't start with eggs, but they started out as eggs. They went into their caterpillar stage of life. They ate and ate and ate and ate. And now they have moved into the chrysalis stage of their life. Or wait a minute, or is it a cocoon? Hmm, what is the difference between a cocoon and a chrysalis? So I even wonder. myself, I'm guilty of doing this sometimes, is calling one or mixing the two up together like they're the same thing. But really, they're not. So we need to understand the difference between them. So what is the difference between um, a cocoon and a chrysalis? Well, to understand that, we need to know the difference between a butterfly and a moth. 
Now these are very similar insects that go through very similar lifestyles. So let's take a look at how they're the same and how they're different. So a moth is very similar. So it starts its life as an egg, just like a butterfly. It emerges out of its egg as a hungry caterpillar and munches away on lots of leaves. So it can move on to the next stage of life, which is a pupa, before finally becoming an adult butterfly, or an adult moth, just like a butterfly does. However, there is one big difference. When the caterpillar is ready to reach the pupa stage or the cocoon stage, he starts building the cocoon. So he'll often build the cocoon out of silk or leaves or other type of plant material. It's basically a structure that they fold around them and cover themselves with to keep them safe inside as they transform from a caterpillar into a pupa, which it turns into like a little bit of a jelly type of worm looking thing. And then while it's inside that pupa stage protected by the cocoon, it's transforming and going through its metamorphosis and coming an adult moth. A butterfly, on the other hand, though similar, is different. So like a moth starts out as an adult, we have an egg, the egg hatches, we have a caterpillar, then we have a chrysalis. So a butterfly doesn't actually build its chrysalis. It actually becomes a chrysalis. So what we see is when, um, just like I showed you guys with our painted lady caterpillars, is when they went to the top of the cup, they immediately started shedding their entire skin and had to shake it off. That was because underneath was the chrysalis. So inside the chrysalis, the, or the caterpillar isn't inside the chrysalis. That's where the metamorphosis is taking place in the, in the big change. But right now at this stage of life, the chrysalis is the caterpillar, which is the butterfly. It's in its, um, it's in its pupa stage, which is the chrysalis. So, they are similar, but different. So let's take another look at a little different chart here. So, or this picture will help us. So this one, we'll just say for argument's sake, is uh, it's a drawing, but it is a chrysalis. So this one is a butterfly pupa. This is what the caterpillar turns into. This one, which is a cocoon and built by a moth, is built by the caterpillar to protect itself. So this is like a shelter that is built to protect the pupa. And this over here is the pupa. So I made a little chart here to help us understand and I'll read through it just because um, I can do that. And But I want you guys to think about how butterflies and moths are the same and different. And if I didn't think of anything, which I've definitely missed a lot of items here, feel free to talk about it with your family or friends and tell or message me or comment here on Seesaw or on Google Classroom, if that's what your class is using, and let me know other differences that we might have noticed. So this is a Venn diagram. So on one circle, we have butterflies. On the other circle, we have moths. And in the middle, this is where we talk about how things are, or how they are the same. So they both start life as an egg. They both emerge as caterpillars, which is the larva stage of their life. They both experience a huge metamorphosis and go through a huge change in their bodies. And they finally all emerge, all emerge from the pupa form as adult insects. So either as an adult butterfly or an adult moth. But there are some differences. So butterflies become a chrysalis. Moths build a cocoon. Other differences are butterflies are typically really colorful. Moths, however, you've probably seen, are often white or brownish colors and overall less colorful. Butterflies are usually quite slender, where moths also sometimes appear to be quite furry, but really those are actually long, long scales to, that protect them and help collect um, pollen and whatnot. So that's also a big difference. And another big difference is butterflies are often the most active during the day. That's when they're, um, that's when they're going from flower to flower, and they are collecting pollen and munching on the plants. A moth, however, is most typically active in the early hours of the morning or the late hours of the evening and in the night. So that's usually why when you have a light on at night, you always get a lot of moths flying around them. So those are kind of the big difference. But the other day I gave you guys a link and Miss, um, Miss Bates' class, you guys were also given the task to read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. 
But what about the story of the very hungry caterpillar? In this story, at the towards the end, Eric Carl, the writer, tells us that the caterpillar, who turns into a butterfly at the end, builds a cocoon. Is he right? Is he wrong? What do you think? Well, in very uh, recent years, Eric Carl has been asked about this a lot. And what I found on the internet was that he had a response. He concedes or admits that yes, caterpillars don't transform into cocoons or build cocoons with the exception of one type of caterpillar or one type of butterfly that he was able to to mention now butterflies and there are hundreds of thousands of different species of moths and butterflies so it's not surprising that they're not all the same but Eric Carl did mention the name of a caterpillar and I'll have to find it or a butterfly caterpillar that actually does build a cocoon was that the type of caterpillar he was talking about in the story? No, he admits that wasn't it. His caterpillar is, in his um, story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, is based on a monarch caterpillar, which actually builds the t this type of um, this type of chrysalis here, or that transforms into this type of chrysalis. Very different looking than the ones of our painted ladies, which are quite brown and really not quite as pretty as these ones here. All right, let's move on. So it's been a few days now since our painted lady butterflies have transformed from caterpillar into the chrysalis stage of their life form. So let's take a close look at what they all look like now sitting in their cups hanging upside down as chrysalises going through their metamorphosis inside. So there you have it. That is all of our Painted Lady chrysalises hanging upside down. So we originally started, we we're supposed to start with 10 caterpillars. When the cup arrived, it actually only had eight caterpillars. And the ninth one was actually still a caterpillar, but very tiny and didn't grow and then has passed away. So then we had eight main caterpillars, but although all of them made it their way to the top, all eight of those caterpillars, one has fallen off when he was shaking off his skin and the chrysalis is lying on the floor of the cup. So hopefully he transforms pretty well. So now we have seven chrysalises hanging upside down, potentially one more laying on the ground. And in the next day, I'm gonna get ready to, to put together their habitat. So when they come out of their um, chrysalises, they're in more of a spacious space to allow them to kind of emerge. So when they emerge, they're going to come out with very, very wet wings. And we're going to see some more of that kind of red lit body liquid there. That's just going to be a byproduct of their bodies changing. And we're going to talk a bit about in the next video about what actually is going on inside the chrysalis during that metamorphosis. Exactly what's happening to their bodies and their insides. How do they go for something so thick and long and lanky into something so slender with such beautiful wings? Like it's a completely different body, which is why it's called the metamorphosis. But what we're going to do is put together their habitat. And this is their habitat. Now it doesn't look like much, but it's kind of like a little pop tent. So we pop it open like that. And now there you have it. You have a very spacious Painted Lady Caterpillar Hotel. So inside of this, uh, this little space here, the lid opens up as does a little... Um, window door right there we're going to put some natural items in here that a caterpillar would feel comfortable when he's coming out he or she is coming out so we'll make sure we have some um some leaves and whatnot some items on there on the bottom of the ground we're, i'll put up i usually put a plant in here or two um something alive that's in a pot that sits on the ground and i don't know i've done it differently in different years when i was a classroom teacher so what sometimes i did was i actually very carefully have lifted that paper, that little tissue, that paper tissue off out of the cup with the help of a, a friend or partner and gently put it on some branches that's kind of holding it up. 
but you do run a risk then of them falling. It would be a really shame for them to go this long way and just um, me risk their safety in those final final days. So we'll come up with a safe plan of how we can move them and transform or transport them in here if it's possible. And we're gonna let them just kind of fly around for a day or so as we're observing them, as we as we try to learn a little bit more from them, but we don't wanna keep them in here too long because they're gonna to need to make that movement into the real world. Well, my family's getting home, so I gotta go. I hope you guys all have a great day. Take care, stay safe, and I will update with you on the caterpillars and the, the painted lady butterflies as it happens. Hope you all are doing well. Bye guys.